Good morning, friends. It's Miss Nikki. As you can see, I'm not at the library today. Unfortunately, the library is closed. I'm sure all of your grown-ups have been telling you about why we need to stay home a little bit more and about why we need to make sure we're washing our hands. I hope everyone's doing that like they're supposed to. But you know what? I really just couldn't stand the thought of not having story time for all of my friends while I was at home. So I hope you guys are excited as I am for our very, very first ever virtual story time at the James Memorial Public Library, but from Miss Nikki's house. So I hope you guys are as excited as I am to get started. Let's see. I've got four great stories to share with you instead of three today because we are not unfortunately going to be able to have a craft. At least I'm not having a craft at home. Maybe some of you will be really lucky and your grown up will have a craft for you to do. Instead, we're going to have an extra story today and maybe an extra song. So I hope you guys are excited to get started. Today, we're going to start with one of my favorite stories. One that I've read to you guys before. It's called... The Curious Garden by Peter Brown. Now, if you've heard me read this one before, then you know one of my favorite things about The Curious Garden is the pictures. So I'll try to make sure that I'm not flipping too quickly through the pages for you guys to get a good look. And you know, it just occurs to me everything's backwards, but that's okay. I think the pictures will still be good. All right. Here we go, friends. I hope you've all got your big listening ears on but I have faith in you. There was once a city without gardens or trees or greenery of any kind. Most people spent their time indoors. As you can imagine, it was a very dreary place. However, there was one boy who loved being outside. Even on drizzly days, when everyone else stayed inside, you could always find Liam happily splashing through the puddles in his neighborhood. It was on one such morning that Liam made several surprising discoveries. He was wandering around the old railway, as he did from time to time, when he stumbled upon a dark stairwell leading up to the track. The railway had stopped working ages ago, and since Liam had always wanted to explore the tracks, there was only one thing for a curious boy to do. Liam ran up the stairs, pushed open the door, and stepped out onto the railway. The first thing he saw was a lonely patch of color. Do you see it, boys and girls? It's right here. Wildflowers and plants were the last things he had expected to find up there, but when he took a closer look, it became clear that the plants were dying. They needed a gardener. Do any of you like to garden? I bet some of your grown-ups do. Liam may not have been a gardener, a gardener, but he knew that he could help. So he returned to the railway the very next day and got to work. The flowers nearly drowned, and he had a few pruning problems, as you can see there in the pictures, friends. But the plants patiently waited while Liam found better ways of gardening. As the weeks rolled by, Liam began to feel like a real gardener, and the plants began to feel like a real garden. Most gardens stay in one place, but this was no ordinary garden. With miles of open railway ahead of it, the garden was growing restless. It wanted to explore. The tough little weeds and mosses were the first to move. They popped up farther and farther down the tracks and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. Oh. 
Oh, look at the garden moving through the city. Boys and girls, isn't it beautiful? Over the next few months, Liam and the Curious Garden explored every corner of the railway. This is my favorite part, friends. The illustrations are so beautiful. Wow! Look at Liam's amazing flower patch. Remember how it was just a lonely little patch of color just a few days ago. Here's another part of the railway. You can see right here where the flower patch is creeping along. And even back here where all the little weeds and mosses are popping up along the way. Oh, I just love this story so much. Check out this page. Oh, what season is it now, friends? That's right, it's winter. Mm-hmm. Things don't grow as well in the winter, do they? Liam's about to learn that, too. After spending his spring and summer and autumn with the garden, Liam's time on the railway was finally interrupted by winter. Heavy blankets of snow fell on the city that season, and for the first time since he'd become a gardener, Liam could not visit the plants. Look, friends, there's Liam. Everyone's going sledding, but he's wishing he could be with his garden. Oh, poor Liam. I'm sure he's disappointed. However, Rather than waste his winter worrying about the garden, Liam spent it preparing for spring. What's he doing, friends? He's reading a book about gardening. See the flower on the front? Oh, he's getting ready for spring. After three cold months, the snow finally began to melt, and Liam rolled his new gardening gear over to the railway. He's got his wheelbarrow now and all of his extra tools. He's really ready to be a gardener now, isn't he? Oh my. Oh, winter had taken a toll on the garden. That's true. But thanks to Liam's planning, his handy new tools, and a little help from the sun, the plants soon awoke from their winter sleep. Wow! He's doing such a great job! The garden had always wanted to explore the rest of the city. And that spring, it was finally ready to make its move. Once again, the tough little weeds and mosses set out first. They popped up farther and farther from the railway and were closely followed by the more delicate plants. The garden was especially curious about old, forgotten things. Do you think anyone can drive that truck anymore? No, I'd say not. There's no wheels. How silly would that be? But it's a great place for a garden. And look here. There's a tree growing out of the basement and flowers growing out of the cracks in the sidewalks. Wow, that garden is really exploring the whole city now. A few plants popped up where they didn't belong. Oh, friends, is that a good idea for plants to be growing on our stop sign? Oh no, that's not safe. Liam's gonna take care of that. Yep, and here on our fire hydrant too, how could our firefighters access this if it's covered in weeds? Oh no! Others mysteriously popped up all at once. I wonder where this came from. Friends, do you recognize this fun little gardener? He's in disguise, but I think that's Liam. And I think he's helping the garden. But the most surprising things that popped up were the new gardeners. 
Look, everyone's following Liam and learning from him. One curious boy is helping transform a whole city. Wow, isn't that amazing? Oh, it's such a good story, friends. This is where the pictures really come in. Because you can see here, I bet those are Liam's bare feet walking down the stairs that were once plain, now covered in grass. And here's some boys and girls playing in the water with the fish and the birds and all of the patches of green. Oh, friends, I think Liam has met a friend of his own. She seems very nice. Looks like they're having a picnic. I bet she likes the garden too. Look, even these tall buildings have beautiful green things growing there now. Do you guys recognize this scene? At the beginning of our story, do you remember what this tree looked like? It was just this lonely little patch of color where Liam first discovered the railway garden. There was the little tree when Liam first found it. This was the little house. These were the railroad ties that were all broken. Friends, look at it now. Isn't it beautiful? All the green that's grown. And Liam is a dad now. Look. This is his son and his wife. It was the girl he went on the picnic with. And there's their daughter. And they have this beautiful place. They're spending time together as a family. Many years later, the entire city had blossomed. But of all the new gardens, Liam's favorite was where it had all begun. Friends, look at the city now. Isn't it beautiful? All because one curious little boy liked being outside even when it was dreary. The city went from this to this. Amazing. Any of you could be a curious little boy. You could make a change too. Curious little boy or curious little girl. So now would be the time where we would traditionally sing a little song if we were at the library. And luckily for you guys, I just so happened to be set up to do that from home. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of my little friends, when she comes to the library, from what I'm told, goes, happy, happy, because of my favorite song, If You're Happy and You Know It. I encourage everyone to get up at home, dance, and sing along with If You're Happy and You Know It. Clap your hands. If you my version of If You're Happy and You Know It is on the album Songs for Wiggle Worms by Old Town School of Folk Music. It's one of my favorite albums to use during story time. Um, it's on Amazon Prime Unlimited. If you guys have that, you can listen to this album at home with your kiddos and uh, some of them might recognize some of these songs. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Peekaboo. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Peekaboo. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, peekaboo. Wiggle your ears. If you're happy and you know it, wiggle your ears. 
If you're happy then you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy then you know it, we will your ears. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! happy and you know it, shout hooray. Hooray! Then your face will surely show it. If you're happy then you know it, shout hooray. Wonderful job, friends. I could hear you all singing along with my heart. Thank you so much. I know you guys had as much fun as I did. Next, I have a very funny story about a little creature called the naked mole rat. Naked mole rat gets dressed. It's written and illustrated by Mo Willems. Friends, have you ever wanted to do something maybe just a little bit different? Maybe you wanted to do things your very own way? I think you'll relate to this story. There's so much to learn about the fascinating little creatures known as naked mole rats. But for this story, you only need to know three things. Number one, they are a little bit rat. Number two, they are a little bit mole. Number three, they are all naked. Well, they were with one exception. Wilbur, the naked mole rat who liked to get dressed. Hello. When the other naked mole rats saw him, they said, Ew! What are you doing? Yuck! Well, I like clothes, replied Wilbur. When I, when I get dressed, I can be fancy. Or funny, or cool, or I could just be an astronaut. Oh, it is fun to dress up as all of those things. I do enjoy that as well. When the others heard that, they said, "Ew, yuck! If you don't like, if you like clothes so much, why don't you just go open a store or something?" Oh, that's not very kind. That doesn't make Wilbur feel very good. Naked mole rats can be very sarcastic. But Wilbur thought that was a great idea. Friends, he opened a store of clothes. The other naked mole rats did not. Oh. I don't think they're very happy about Wilbur selling clothes. Oh my. They brought Wilbur a giant portrait of Grandpa, the oldest, greatest, and most naked, naked mole rat ever. Look at that picture, they demanded. Look at his heroic face. Look at his regal bearing. Look at his total lack of clothing. Grandpa did look heroic. And Grandpa did look regal. But he also would look heroic and regal in a casual shirt and some summer slacks. Oh, said the other mole rats. Don't you get it? Naked mole rats don't wear clothes. Well, but, well, can't they if they want to? Gosh, I feel like they should let Wilbur wear clothes if he wants to. It doesn't hurt them. Why not? Asked Wilbur. That's a really good question. 
something had to be done. Oh, friends, I think they're a little bit angry. That's usually what that means. Oh, Wilbur. The naked mole rats marched right over to Grandpa and told him all about Wilbur. And then he asked, why not? Hmm. Grandpa was very wise. He thought seriously about everything he had heard. Hmm. Oh. And then he thought some more. Finally, in a heroic, regal voice, gather the colony. I shall make a proclamation. Friends, a proclamation is a great announcement, usually made by a strong leader. When Wilbur heard about Grandpa's proclamation, he knew it was serious. A proclamation! A proclamation! A proclamation! Oh my, I wonder what he could be saying. But Wilbur had no idea what to wear. He could dress as an artist, he could be fancy, he could be a cowboy or a superhero, or he could clean up his room. Oh, Wilbur, my heavens. In the end, Wilbur decided to play it safe. So he's mostly a naked mole rat, just wearing his socks. But maybe not safe enough. Oh my. Oh, all the other naked mole rats are upset with Wilbur just for wearing socks. Poor Wilbur. I think he's feeling a little embarrassed, maybe a little ashamed. Oh, that makes me sad for him. The others were looking at Wilbur, so busy looking at Wilbur's socks, that no one noticed Grandpa enter until he cleared his throat and proclaimed, here it comes, the big proclamation. <gasps> Friends, he's wearing clothes. Fellow naked mole rats, I had never worn clothes until I heard Wilbur's simple question. Why not? Why not indeed? Do clothes hurt anyone? No. Are they fun? Well, they may not be for everyone. But this old naked mole rat wishes he had tried getting dressed earlier. Then, Grandpa complimented Wilbur on his socks. As fast as his legs could take him, Wilbur rushed home, put on his favorite outfit, and dashed back. Oh my, he looks very fancy. When he returned, Wilbur discovered he was not alone. Look! Look at all the naked mole rats that are dressed up now. She's dead. Much has been said about that day, but for this story, you only need to know three things. Some of the mole rats were naked. Some of the mole rats were clothed. All of the mole rats had a great time. No exceptions. And now look at Wilbur's store. Everybody wants to shop there now, don't they? The end. Did you guys like that story? I hope you do. I love that story. Naked mole rats are funny. But my favorite thing about that story is how, in the end, when Grandpa decides that everyone should be allowed to wear clothes if they want to, it doesn't hurt anything, then everyone else realizes, hey, Grandpa is right. It doesn't have to be everyone naked mole rats all the time. I'm glad. 
I like wearing clothes. I bet some of you like wearing clothes too. How many of you are wearing your favorite clothes right now? Raise your hand. I can't see you, but I can feel you. Okay, now we are going to listen to another song. I'm really excited for this next song because it's going to be one that helps us learn our left from our right. Do you already know your left and right? I know my left and right, but it wasn't always easy for me. There's a really fun dance that helps us know how to remember our left from our right. Some of you might know it. It's called the Hokey Pokey. Put your right hand in, your right hand out. Your right hand in and you shake it all about. You do the Hokey Pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Your left hand out, your left hand in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Put your right foot in, your right foot out. Your right foot in, and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your left foot in, your left foot out. Put it in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Put your belly button in, your belly button out. Ah! And you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. You put your head in. You ready? Put your whole self in. You put your whole self out. You put your whole self in and you shake it all about. You shake it all about. You shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Yay! <coughs> Excuse me. Great job, friends. You guys know all that dancing and singing wears me out. Whoops. And thanks for sticking with me through learning how to do this using our video equipment. You guys are being a great audience today. I've got a couple more stories. <coughs> Don't worry, it's just a little bit of a... An allergy cough. I'm not getting sick. No fears. You know who is getting sick? Our friend Bear. Poor Bear. Bear Feels Sick is written by Karma Wilson and illustrated by Jane Chapman. Oh. I hope all of you are feeling well today and continue to feel well. But if you get sick, I hope you have great friends like Bear that help you through it. There's our friend Bear. All right, I hope you've all got your big listening ears on. Alone in his cave, as the autumn wind blows, Bear feels achy with a stuffed up nose. He tosses and he turns, all huddled in a heap. Bear feels tired, but he just can't sleep. He sniffs and he sneezes, he whips and he wheezes, and the bear feels sick. Oh no, oh poor bear. His friends gather round. Come out, Bear, and play. Bear shakes his head. I'm too sick today. Mouse mutters. Oh, my. Bear's head is too hot. Hare says, we will help. Here's a warm, cozy spot. Oh, aren't they wonderful to take care of their friend this way? Bear has good friends. Oh, no. Bear mumbles and he moans. 
he grumbles and he groans. And the bear feels sick. Mm, poor bear. Mouse squeezes bear tight. He whispers in his ear, it'll be just fine. Your friends are all here. Oh, a hug from a friend is so nice when you're not feeling well. Badger fetches water, gopher cooks the broth, while mole soothes bear with a cool wet cloth. Oh, that's something your mom or your dad or your grandma or grandpa might do when you're feeling sick. They cover Bear up, and he drinks from a cup, but he still feels sick. Oh, poor Bear. Raven says, Caw! Come along, Owl and Wren. Let us go gather herbs to bring back to the den. They coax Bear to sip just a smidgen of tea. You'll feel better soon, says Mouse. Wait and see. Oh, tea is really good when you're not feeling very well. Bear shakes and he shivers. He coughs and he quivers. And he still feels sick. Oh, poor bear. Friends fuss and fret, the friends cook and care. They keep a close eye on their poor sick bear. They all talk in whispers, they walk on tippy toes, they sing lullabies, and then bear starts to doze. It is, it is important to be very quiet when someone in your house isn't feeling well because they need to rest. They watch Bear for hours. We've done all we could. And the Bear wakes up. And the Bear feels good. Oh, you guys, he's feeling better. Bear cries, I feel better. I'm feeling like new. I'm not hot and achy, and it's all thanks to you. Let's celebrate now. Let's go out and play. Let's jump in the leaves. Let's frolic all day. Then the mouse starts to wheeze, and the hare starts to sneeze, and the friends feel sick. Uh-oh, that does happen sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah, uh-oh. Well, Bear murmurs, don't worry, and he tucks them into bed. He bundles them up and kisses each head. He tells all his friends, you'll soon feel like new. You took care of me. And now I'll take care of you. The end. Oh, did you guys like that story? I love, love, love that story. It's one of my very, very favorites because Bear's friends are so kind and caring and they want to help take care of him. But we have to remember at the end of the day, we've got to make sure we don't get sick when we're helping take care of our friends. Okay, guys, we're going to jump into our last story for today. This is another really good story that I like very much called The Magic Hat. This one is written by Mem Fox and illustrated by Trisha Tusa. I hope I'm saying that right. The Magic Hat. And I also want to take a minute while I've got you guys here to say thank you to all of the wonderful authors and illustrators and publishers who have um, allowed us to 
read their books during this time where we're all kind of stuck at home or stuck inside and, and not able to go out and, and do things like um, participate in library story times. So um, we're really, really thankful to, to all of those wonderful people who have been um, allowing us to do this. And I see we've got a question on there from uh, Jenny Chapman. Jenny, just to let you know, um, we are not supposed to archive the posts. It's supposed to be a live stream, but I believe we can keep it available for 24 hours. So just kind of keep an eye on our Facebook page. Um, I will be doing it every week, and hopefully if, if response is there and if uh, people would like for me to do it more frequently, I checked out about 50 picture books to bring home, and of course I've got a selection of my own picture books here. So um, I may be able to do additional story times, maybe some in the evenings and on the weekends, um, just to kind of give everyone a chance to, uh, to participate it when they can. So, okay guys, here we go with Mem Fox's The Magic Hat. One fine day from out of town and without any warning at all, there appeared a magic hat. Do you guys see it? It's right here. It's blue. It's got a little red and white striped palm on the top. It looks magical, doesn't it? Oh, the magic hat. The magic hat. It moved like this. It moved like that. It spun through the air and over a road and sat on the head of a warty old toad. Ribbit. Croak. Oh, the magic hat. The magic hat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air like a bouncing balloon and sat on the head of a hairy baboon. Oh, the magic hat, the magic hat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air from way over there and sat on the head of a sleepy old Bear! He looks very silly, doesn't he? That dancing bear. Everyone's chasing the magic hat. Oh, the magic hat, the magic hat. It moved like this and it moved like that. It spun through the air. It's true, it's true! And sat on the head of a kangaroo! Oh, the magic hat, the magic hat. It moved like this, it moved like that. It spun through the air for a mile and a half and sat on the head of a lofty giraffe. Oh my, oh my, look how high he is up in the sky. And then, with a skip, and then, with a hop, a wizard appeared with a sign that said, STOP! Uh-oh. Do you think the magic hat might belong to the wizard? So everyone stopped and stared in surprise at the wonderful wizard with the sparkling eyes, who took from his beard with a nod and a wink, a wand which he waved. And what do you think? The toad, the baboon, the bear, and the roo, and of course the giraffe, all what a to do, turned back into people, dazed and confused, watched by a crowd that was highly amused. While no one was looking, the wizard, meanwhile, skipped out of town with a mischievous smile. And of course, on his head was the fabulous hat that made all the magic wherever it sat. That was our last story of the day, friends. 
Thank you so much for joining us for story time today. I hope you had a good time and thank you for for sitting with us and spending time with us while you're at home or wherever you happen to be today. And make sure that you turn on notifications for the library's Facebook page. And then anytime in the future that we go live, like we've done today, you'll receive a notification for that. Um, I am hoping to start doing more live story times, but I need to make sure that you guys are interested in those. So if you want me to do more live story times, just drop a comment down in the comments down below and let us know, and uh, or you can send us a message. And of course, just to let you guys know once again, library services as much as we can are still available. Um, we are keeping everything renewed while it's checked out. Uh, the library staff, if you contact them directly there at the library, they can set you up with ebooks. And our ebook service is through a third party company called Overdrive. And Overdrive has over 100,000 titles that we um, have access to. So that includes ebooks, audiobooks, and streaming video, as well as some um, magazines. So it's a really great service. It's free with your library card. So if you have a library card, just go ahead and um, contact one of the ladies up at the library. Phone lines are open, and they will be very happy to assist you with that. And um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks again for joining us. Bye.